Welcome to Computer Tech and More. We're going to be taking a look at the Epo Maker EP75. It is a 75% keyboard, and that is what attracted me to it. The box is pretty basic, so let's go ahead and just open it up. Okay, while we're opening up the box, this is a $100 keyboard, and the keycaps are PBT. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, no bent pens. That's very important for a keyboard. And Epo Maker makes a lot of keyboards, and they are this one is hot swappable. And for me, uh, this was the only one that I came across from them that didn't have a control knob, which I don't personally like that much. But uh, your mileage or opinion may vary, so you're welcome to whatever. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at this one specifically. And this has a keycap puller and switch remover. The uh, cable here is just a. Uh, well, it is a cased USB-C to USB-A, USB-2 style cable. And here is the keyboard. It's just got some basic foam padding around it. And there it is. Let's check its rigidity. Well, it creaks. So, uh, I don't know if you can see that. That was before I even bent on it. Uh, so there is some fit and fit fit and fitment that I would say needs to improve on it. But that's pretty nice. So it's got a little uh, knob in there. You push that so it's unlikely to get lost over time for your dongle. USB-C right there. And there's the keyboard. So 65% and 75%, this is 75%, are near identical. It's just whether you're missing the F row or not. Personally, I, I guess I just like the appearance of the F-Row. I don't particularly need it. So I tend to like 75% over 10 keyless for some reason. Uh, and you just get all the kind of the 10 keyless buttons nice and compact in there with the arrow key shifted over and like the shift and the enter and the control kind of all shrunk in size. Let's flip the keyboard over. This is the way the bottom looks. The rubber pads are okay. The ones on the feet are okay. They, these feet feel kind of flimsy to me. Not the most secure things in the world. And right here you have off and on. So it's got the little blinking light right there. We're gonna keep it off for now until we plug it into a computer. And I think the coloring on it looks pretty good. The keycaps on it have this little cup shape onto it, so you know that your finger is resting inside of a particular key. Um, this is probably the only keyboard I've actually used with this type of um, keycap on it. So I don't know how that'll affect my typing speed on it, but it feels interesting because I, I don't actually use this type of keycap on uh, a daily basis. So. I'll be curious to know if I like it or not. So other than that fit and finish that I talked about, there's just a little bit of, like just this little bit of flex in it. And it's kind of disappointing. The top is all plastic. I don't know if it's got any metal underneath it, but the sound of the keyboard sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and do that so you can hear it. So I think this sounds very nice. It uh, has a nice funky sound to it, which is very pleasant. So mine has the Budjigar switches in it. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I do need to refresh my memory as to what kind of switch that is, but it does feel tactile. I don't know, I need to confirm that. I'll uh, update the middle part of the review with that section talking more about the keycaps. So the fit and finish of this is a little bit on the disappointing side, but the overall sound and feel of the keyboard and the layout, I do really like at this time. Um, in terms of other functionality, well, I'm sure that there is a second layer for the keys for like print screen and stuff. And I do wish that if it does have the secondary functionality, 
that they would print it on the inside. It would just look, um, I think, would be better. But uh, to each their own, and some people don't like it, I'm one that does because uh, right off the bat, I'm going from basically a full-size keyboard to a more compact keyboard. So I'd want that functionality kind of already built or visually in there so that if I forget what it does, it would be easier to figure it out. All right, we just pulled it off. It is a double shot keycap. I think I mentioned it before, but it's PBT, which is nice because it means it won't turn shiny over time. And that was very easy to pull out. And so it's got a little LED in it. So this is not a uh, translucent top. So that means this will restrict lighting a little bit and the shine actually just illuminates the area around the key and doesn't shine through the keycap itself even though it is double shot. And this is a box style switch that uses five pins, but a three pin should work as well. Uh, it's got a blue PCB, sorry, that was just amusing to me. And putting the switch back in, nice and easy. Let's put the switch back. The spacebar feel, the keys actually feel pretty smooth. Like it's very smooth, considering that these are uh, listed as PBT. Um, so they must have just gotten a nice polish on it. So the curvature on it is actually there for like several, like the space bar is very <laughs> almost slippery feeling. Other key stabilization. Shift is incredibly secure. Space bar feels fantastic. So other than the case being a little bit, I don't know. I don't know if I want to call that poorly made, but um, I don't know, movie. The rest of it feels very nice. So let's go ahead and plug it into a computer and see what's what. Okay, to get the software, I just went to Eple Maker's website. I found my particular model and we'll go ahead and install. It did download in a zip folder and Windows Security did say don't uh, install things from companies you don't trust. So hopefully this is good and I didn't just hack my own computer. Alrighty, I'm adjusting my, trying to adjust my zoom, whoops, too far. This is the software and I'm going to be learning it at the same time as you all are seeing it. So uh, enjoy the experience. So at the top here, we have home, device, macros. Let's click on the device and see what we get. Okay. I think that looks a little bit better than full screen. So let's go ahead and so here we are. If I click on W, what is going on? Oh, it's trying to ask me if I want to remap. Hang on. Okay, we are figuring this out. So over here we have onboard editor, remap key W. Okay, so this is what you go about and changing out the layout of the keyboard. Uh, whether how well keys can actually be swapped out, I don't know offhand. Whether they're custom height or something like that, I know it's a lot of custom uh, mechanical keyboards. The keycaps are actually supposed to be in specific spots, so I don't know how well this would actually handle that. And then we have app mode. Default W, click on that, and then mat, remap key, mouse, text, disable, multimedia, key contribution, shortcut, switch, profile, launch application. I don't really want to do any of that. Oh, there's lighting effects. That's what I was looking for. So there we are on the side. So there's soft keyboard there, and then performance, reset. So if you messed something up, you could go and do that. Light, enter, sleep. Uh -huh, okay, let's go ahead and adjust some lighting. So kind of cool on here, it has a little bit of a preview of what it's going to look like as you uh, click through. So breathe, where it's just sort of pulsing. Mind, it doesn't look like it's actually done anything on the keyboard until I click OK. Once I hit OK, it um, refreshes it so that it um, matches what you see on the screen. But what I care about is custom. 
So I'm going to pick a purple color for my W A. Uh, actually, no, I want those to be red. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and then I'm going to click on. So I don't need to hit shift or anything. I just click on everything I want change to this point. Uh, one thing I am noticing is that the keyboard on screen is a little bit on the small side. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so how do I make it so that... Oh, that reset itself. Well, that's not what I wanted. Okay, I am still figuring this out, but it appears like you click on, you know, everything you want and then I can come up here and let's just say select that color click OK it then saves it but if I click on anything else you'll see that there's still a little red box around each of these so now this and all those are going to change color so the only thing that I can figure out to do is you click out and then you come back and then I can click on more. And let's say orange. Click OK. It's now updated that. Come back. And then we can click over here. Let's just go ahead and do the whole outer edge. Normally I do a little bit more customization. Um, what color should I make this? Should I just go white? Okay, click out, click back, and now the keyboard is basically customized except for the outer edge. So this is going to show up on screen, but it's something I'm doing on the keyboard. By pushing F in Control and Alt, so the, the keys effectively, where's my mouse, right here, these three. I can adjust the outer modes of the lighting. And right now I'm actually trying to see if I can turn off. Side brightness, Fn and the bracket. Okay. So depending on how much side lighting you actually want, you can completely turn it off, turn it on when you bright. I'm leaning towards like one down and um, one other note is so we need this zoomed in view to really see it but a lot of light bleed comes into the keyboard itself so it's just shining through a whole lot so that's why I personally am just liking the white and the diffusion on it isn't great. You can clearly see it's even more pronounced on camera. But you can clearly see where each of the LED lights are in it. But at a hundred bucks with an $8 coupon, which is what it's going for right now, it's acceptable. And I'm going to go ahead and comment about the software right now. We're kind of done with it at this point. It's perfectly usable. I wouldn't call it stellar or fantastic. But you can adjust the macros, you can adjust the colors. It's a little bit clunky, but again, on a, um, what do I want to call it, Epo Maker, they make custom keyboards, but then they have like default layouts that they just try to sell. So they're a custom keyboard manufacturer, I guess, or customizer seller. So the fact that they have their own custom software that is usable, it's not quite as fine tuned as others. But it's certainly easier to use, well, maybe not easier to use. It's easier to see what it's going to look like in the end than something that you got out of like a drop. But um, I guess it's perfectly acceptable for given the price tag of this keyboard is what I'm trying to say. Next, since we're here in this top view, I might as well talk about the coloring. Well, the keycaps are not shining through, which is a little bit of a disappointment for me, but I would say that's okay certainly not great but it's okay certainly i have to say it's certainly a lot right now usable 
but I would like to see shine through keycaps considering considering ha huh, that they are PBT double shot keycaps so I mean I guess we wouldn't get that color this kind of aqua color that actually really makes this keyboard looks nice look that really nice so this inner color is the same as this color and then you have this off-white that's the same as that so it really does make this keyboard look excellent in terms of that but having non shine through just i mean this is my razor as off kind of is a sort of downside to me we're we're coming up here we're gonna have these two keyboards next to each other and compare them side by side well my camera view is not quite big enough there we are that looks pretty good so we have the Acer Azoth it's currently my keyboard of choice and we have um, the EP75 and you can see that they're basically exactly the same size the EP is actually slightly bigger if we're being completely honest it's like that much bigger but it's not that much and you can see there are slight differences so the delete key I actually would prefer it higher because it's more that's where it belongs on a more normal keyboard I actually wanted to try to figure out how in the Azoth software to move the delete key up here um, but these key cap key heights are actually different so you can't just swap them so kind of an unfortunate thing about this keyboard because that would be more intuitive to me to have the delete key in this position rather than here so already this layout is really fantastic and personally I don't care about the screen I know I'm supposed to be focusing on this one but I just want to talk about it uh, on the front face you do get a uh, cap lock you get this keyboard can completely lock itself so you could have this in front of your desk and lock the keyboard so no one can type on it um, I can't think of an environment where you would need that in particular but if that's a feature you need then that is excellent it has a little battery life indicator and this changes color I believe based on how much battery is left in the keyboard as it because it doesn't have a screen to tell you what kind of battery life is in it uh, we talked about the lighting on it so the light appearance I, I prefer shine through but this isn't terrible um, the bigger issue for me is this light bleed so I'm going to remove the azoth right now because we're kind of done with it is the light bleed so these were white lights so they look perfectly fine except they look pink to me um, the orange right along this edge because of the white LEDs this looks white to orange white to orange white to orange and that's just true everywhere on this keyboard so that's kind of a downside to me so it's uh do i think that that is okay at a hundred dollar price tag i would lean a little bit towards no but that's me um but the keyboard feels nice and secure on my mat now that we're here and uh well, I guess let's, uh, since we're talking about experience, let's see how well it types. Already, we're about to do the typing test, and as general explanation, I am dyslexic, so I'm not the world's fast typer, but it gives you some idea of what sort of keycap sound it makes because I'm going to have the microphone pointed at the keyboard, my uh, camera is pointed at the screen, and I have to look past my camera to look at, the, look at it, and well, we'll give it our best go, so let's get into it. I think I also forgot to mention that these keycaps are listed as Epo Maker uh, Bull Budge Irgar switches. B U D G E R I G A R. I don't know how to pronounce it. And they are a tactile switch, and it also comes with flamingo and uh, Gateron yellows, which I know the yellows are uh, linear. Anyways, typing test.
Whoops, I forgot to hit that. Wow, that was pretty atrocious for me. Um, 97% accuracy. Oh, that's better than I was expecting. Actually, overall typing speed wasn't terrible. Kind of in line with my average. What I was noticing more is... The key presses. Have a very heavy uh, initial... Front, front press, like my, my fingers actually are, feel a little bit tired after typing that. So overall, I'm not sure what I think about it. Um, the sound is thunky, so if you like a thunk type sound, while my Azoth is a little bit more clicky sounding, higher pitch. So if you like the sound, the other part is these cupped keycaps. Um, I knew exact, I could tell that my fingers were in position, but transferring from one key to another um, didn't feel that great to me. It just, um, Yeah, just transferring my finger from key to key feels a little bit less smooth than just a flat key cap. Mind, if you if you spend time and got used to it, it would be just fine. The upper ridge, well, it kind of it starts off high and goes low, and then it rocks up. So yeah, just this resistance going up is. Uh, I'm gonna just say I don't really like it. Uh, I'm sure it's something you could get used to, but it's not for me. So we're going to go ahead and move to our uh, gaming test and uh, run around and see how it does. We have the receiver. Right now we are plugged in wired and uh, to try to get a general feel for it. And I'm going to compare it partially against my Razer Azoth to uh, see how it does because the Razer Azoth, Azoth uh, reviewed incredibly well with ratings, so it's a good comparison point. All right, first let's kind of do a, um, are those bad guys? Oh, I forgot that's what, that's what that was. That's funny. It's been a long time. Okay, let's just do a quick Well, I see no meaningful uh, like latency in in it. So um, there's that. All right, we found some combat. Boom! Shotgun. Boom! Shotgun. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, wow. Do, 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 because we haven't played this game in a really long time. Oh, I probably did not want to jump in there. And down we go. Ah, there's going to be a head grab here, isn't there? Stop attacking me. I only have four health left. Ah. Well, we're probably not going to make it very far, but 
Ah, oh, there's another one. Let's go ahead and switch to the receiver. Right after I get it out of the water, because that's apparently where it decided to save me. Okay, to activate Bluetooth, we had to do FN and 4, and hey, looks like we're up and running. Let's check the latency. So I'm going to say I can't see any. That doesn't mean there isn't any, because latency under a certain amount is completely invisible to the human eye. It just means that I cannot see it. Whoops, that's too close to me. Run away! More head crabs over there! Forget about Freeman! How do we get out of here? I don't remember. I seem to remember something about these pipes. So I know that this is not the most like hardcore game in the world. Ah, my god. Ah, well, oh well. But, um, come on. Twice. Can you please just... <sighs> okay, well, that's good at least. Um, the fact that I can just run around and not really worry about it that much... Kind of is all you need to know that the keyboard responds fairly nicely. No real reason to be concerned about performance lag or anything. And I'm just trying to figure out where the heck I'm supposed to go. It's been too long since I played. Oh, I'm being attacked. Or maybe I'm not. Ha, I was attacked. So I guess this brings me into the conclusion for this keyboard. So I think that this is a pretty interesting keyboard. I like the form factor and I like the layout of it, meaning all the switches or keys they have on the sides, but I'm not overly fond of these key caps. Um, the software is kind of wonky. The backlighting could be better at a hundred bucks. That's a full hundred dollars cheaper than the Azov. This is definitely a great buy. The, it doesn't sound hollow. It sounds great. Mind the switches in it are very heavy, at least to my finger. They feel very heavy. Um, I guess that means your hand just potentially gets tired. So other than these switches being heavy and you'd have to work on that finger strength in order to really get used to them, I think it's an okay keyboard. The, the caps you either get used to or you'd want to switch them out. The switches underneath, uh, I'd want to switch it out. The backlighting is okay. So at a hundred bucks, I think it's an okay keyboard. And certainly it has a battery and Bluetooth receiver. So at that price, you are getting the battery and pretty good switches, very good keycaps, but you're losing out on the lighting if you care about that. If you just turn it all off, then it doesn't matter at all. So overall, this seems like a pretty good value, um, especially considering that it has a very good sound to it. Um, I hope this helped you take a look at this keyboard and give you some food for thought about it. Um, if you got suggestions for other videos for me to make, please leave it down in the comment section down below, as well as ways that I can improve my videos. I'm always looking for constructive criticism, 
If you're just going to hate on it, then I don't need to hear it. But if you've got ways that I can actually improve the experience, I would be more than welcome for it. Other than that, have a great day. I've got a Patreon page. I really appreciate the support. And I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and more.